guests. We have uh, Dr. William Burnett, and he's the Professor Emeritus at Vanderbilt University School of Medicine and the president of Parent Parental Alienation Study Group. Dr. Burnett posed uh, something that he wanted to talk about. He wants to speak about the misinformation and, um, and he's also going to summarize how the five-factor model works for the diagnosis of parental alienation. So, uh, Dr. Burnett, you get to speak first. Well, thank you, Danica, for the introduction. And hello, everybody. It's nice to see everybody. Have, happy PAA Day all over the world. And uh, I guess just it's obvious that there are so many different aspects and so many different points of view having to do with the, to the general topic of parental alienation. There are so many different important aspects. And I think that among the group of us, we're gonna hit different topics. But the main one, I, I mentioned, Danica mentioned a couple of them. The main one I wanna make sure people know about is what we have been promoting, Amy Baker and I have been promoting the five factor model for the diagnosis of parental alienation. So what is this? Well, one of the things we've gotten criticized about over years is our, our critics say, oh, there, there's no reliable way, there's no systematic way of, of diagnosing parental alienation. So uh, Amy and I put together a, a pretty, I guess I could call it simple, because the elements of it are pretty obvious, but I'm gonna run through them. And I, I, uh, this is all available on the website of PASG, or I have an article about it. I can send any of you, anybody who's listening, if you contact me, I can, I can send you the, the actual article. But, but it's called the five-factor model. And let me run, I'm just gonna run down the five factors real quick. Number one is, in diagnosing parental alienation, the first question is, is the child actually avoiding a relationship with one of the parents? or is the child manifesting what we call contact refusal? I mean, that's pretty simple. And that, that's simply in the definition of parental alienation, that the child is avoiding one of the parents. So that one isn't very controversial. The second of the five factors is that the child previously had a good relationship with the rejected parent. And that also is pretty obvious that you have to be able to show that, that generally the parent has done a good job and generally the two of them had a good relationship but now, uh, due to events in the divorce and things that have happened, uh, the child is now rejecting the parent that they previously had a good relationship with. So let me just mention one little exception here. Suppose from the very beginning, suppose it's the mother who's the alienating parent, and suppose from the very beginning, from the child's birth, the mother took possession of the child and let the father have very little interaction. Well, in that case, the dad would not be able to show a previous good relationship, but our position is that can still be uh, a case of parental alienation. In fact, maybe even worse than an average case. So I just wanna explain that even though we have five factors, there might be exceptions, small exceptions. The third factor is that you cannot show abuse or neglect or seriously bad parenting on behalf of the uh, rejected parent. In other words, this is, that would be called estrangement. Estrangement is when the child rejects a parent for a good reason. Uh, but in alienation, you have to be able to show that the that, that parent has not engaged in abusive or seriously deficient parenting. So I, I think uh, so far, I think almost everybody would agree with this, even people who criticize the concept of parental alienation. So the fourth factor has to do with alienating behaviors. That to prove this in court or even in a, in a clinical setting, you have to be able to show that the preferred parent has manifested a number of alienating behaviors. And um, you all might be familiar with the research of Amy Baker, that there's a list that many of us use of 17 common alienating behaviors. You know, like one of them is the parent uh, makes the child think that the other parent is dangerous or the parent withholds parenting time. Well, there are 17 of these. And so that's a criterion for diagnosing uh, uh, parental alienation. And the fifth factor, which is that the child manifests some of the symptoms of, of parental alienation. And, and as you probably know, there are eight common symptoms. The first one is a uh, campaign of denigration and 
so on. One of them is lack of ambivalence, and that means that the child feels one parent is totally, totally good and the other parent is totally, totally evil. And there are eight of these that have been studied extensively. So if you, if you look at these five factors, oh, incidentally, we didn't invent anything new. I mean, all five of these have been around for 35 years, but we have collected them into an entity that we call the five-factor model for the diagnosis of parental alienation. And what's interesting about them is all three parties are represented in one way or another. The rejected parent is, is represented in one of these factors, the child is represented, and the alienating parent is represented. So I just want everybody to learn about this, and I, I hope clinicians can adopt it. I've used this in court. The court finds it very, very helpful, and, and the courts uh, quote it back to me. In other words, when the court writes a decision, the court actually lists these five factors and inserts uh, uh, examples of how different uh, facts of that case are, are found in the five factors. So uh, anyway, uh, I, I hope you all, you know, let me know if you need uh, the article that spells it out or other information. Danica mentioned something about uh, misinformation. And in fact, uh, one, one topic of common misinformation actually has to do with the five factors. I mentioned that factor four is you have to be able to show that uh, the alienating parent has engaged in specific uh, of these 17 alienating behaviors. And fifth, you have to be able to show the child has symptoms. So there's a common misperception that, that of critics of parental alienation theory that what we say is different from that, that there's a common allegation that we say that just by taking a child who's refusing to see a parent, that we assume that the preferred parent is an alienating parent and is engaging in, in alienating behaviors. They have said this over and over again in published documents and articles and, and journals in presentations in court cases. Uh, and it's, it's incorrect. I'm, I'm, I'm emphasizing this to y'all so that you know that, not, that when you hear certain criticisms of parental alienation theory, many of them don't make any sense. And this is one that we have been accused of this fallacy uh, over and over again, that, that the accusation is that we take a child who doesn't want to see a parent and we assume, we automatically assume that it's an alienated child who's been indoctrinated by the preferred parent. In other words, we do that without actually finding evidence of alienating behaviors. So that's a really serious form of misinformation. It's very common. If you happen to see it, uh, the, the, the answer to it is, show me in the PA literature, show me where it says that. Because even though that's, that is cited by critics of parental alienation, as far as I can tell, no writer in the PA literature has ever said that any child who rejects a parent is a result of the other parent being an alienating parent. I, I, I'm not aware that anybody has ever said that in the, in the legitimate parental alienation literature because we would always say, well, there are many reasons, there are various reasons why a child might not want to see a parent. And you have to find evidence to find out which, what, what the right answer is. So anyway, those are a couple of topics. I know we're gonna talk about a lot of different things in the next hour, but uh, that's what I wanted to tell you all about. Well, I appreciate that, I really do. Um, do any of our panelists have, um, have some input on uh, what Dr. Burnett shared? Anne O'Keefe Rogers, she's the founder of Hope Springs, Florida, up in Jacksonville. Can I say something, Danica? Yes, go ahead, Anne. Dr. Burnett, first of all, thank you. I, as an alienated parent, as a professional, I am so grateful for the five-factor model. And what, in my opinion, needs to happen is in the same way that AA and the 12-step program is a household word, we need to have the five-factor model become a household word so that in schools and faith communities and universities, the community at large is aware. Do you have any suggestions on how we can accomplish that? Sure, you can say the words over and over again. Uh, my friends and I have, have, of course, tried to promote this. We, it, it, we have this book, uh, Parental Alienation, Science and Law, and the entire book is structured around that. 
this has been published in places. It's been published in Ireland, and it's about to be published in Poland. Uh, and, and we try to bring this up in various places. And, and Amy and I actually did a survey of custody evaluators uh, where we asked them whether they agreed with this, and the vast majority of them agreed. So we're doing whatever we can to spread the word. I hope that anybody, you know, any of you or any practitioners, uh, you know, can, re can recite it <laughs> over and over. That especially, <laughs> especially if somebody says, oh, there isn't any systematic way. You, you should say, hey, there is a systematic way. This is what it's called. And I'd be happy, as I said, to send the article to you that explains it uh, pretty succinctly. So, I Brunette, um, I have used your article and I sent it out to many in the legal community and the mental health community. And I get the typical pushback. It seems that sometimes science, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, the law is a little bit behind on the science. And that's where, at least in Florida, what I, my observation is, the courts can be so slow to embrace this and to see this, this is a pretty much a plug and play. You've got the five factors. It's almost like a checklist. And so that's really what it seems that kind of the community at large needs to, like you say, keep repeating it over and over. Yeah, it's gonna take work and I appreciate your interest. And um, I, I, I think we, it's one of these things where we all need to kind of tune in and get on the same page and push it ahead. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Amy. No.